Well, let's go live now to Benghazi and talk to Michele Servade, who's the UN representative in Libya. Thank you so much for joining us, Michele. We just heard from my colleague there about the role played by the uh, fractious politics in Libya, but also by uh, the, the concern over the lack of warning. And we heard from a UN official uh, earlier this week who said that most of the thousands of deaths could have been avoided. Can I get your response on that? What do you think could have been done? Where does the responsibility lie here? Good morning, Laksa. I'm UNICEF representative, so I don't represent the whole UN. But as UN, that's not uh, up to us to decide and investigate what has happened in, and what was the, the, real, the real cause. Of course, the dams uh, have collapsed, and that's, uh, and that's evident, and they you know, caused massive tragedy. We were in Derna yesterday. We were in other affected areas the day before with a big UN interagency mission. And now it's about, we need to talk about the needs on the ground and the needs of children and families that not only are remaining in a devastated city, Derna was called the city of Jasmine. Uh, it was a beautiful city that then was destroyed by the war less than 10 years ago, and then now this. So we need to talk about the needs on the ground and we need to talk about the people that are displaced, which are over 35,000. Yes, and Michele, people watching at home will be seeing images live on the screen now of uh, aid workers there wandering among the rubble, trying to continue the clear-up effort. So what do you think is the most pressing concern now? So um, as UNICEF and UN overall, we are very concerned about several things. So first of all, um, you know, water water contamination and disease prevention. So there is a mix between sewage water and the, the normal water, and people are still using tap water, and there is not enough uh, you know, clean water around. Half of the boreholes of the whole town are down. So that's one thing, to do disease prevention and to fix the water systems fast, and to do also awareness campaign for people of where to get um, safe water and do water quality monitoring. Also, in terms of disease prevention, one core thing uh, and is to vaccinate, to vaccinate against waterborne diseases and to restore the vaccination, the, the regular routine vaccination for children, to support the clinics. Many of the clinics have been affected, especially primary health care. Libya has done a great job. The health authorities have done a great job in restoring a field hospital, actually setting up a field hospital in no time. And a lot of international actors are working on health. But in reality, we need to, you know, use this uh, as you know, um, a, a way in to also uh, support the primary health care system, which was very depleted already. And then in terms of children, the specific needs of children is, you know, family separations are high. So we need to do family tracing, registrations, interim care for those children that are unaccompanied and lost relatives and parents. Uh, we need to do psychosocial support massively for children, families in shelters, the ones that are displaced also in other towns. Um, and, and, you know, those, those are the core needs for us at the moment. As UNICEF, we have delivered already aid uh, and we have teams on the ground. And, Michele, there's been criticism, hasn't there, of the uh, speed or lack thereof of the response of the international aid effort. What's your thought on that? I think, so, um, I think uh, the first day very few people expected it to be this bad in Derna specifically because we were getting most of the reports from other cities, but Derna was completely cut off. I know the security actors went in the, the, on day one. As humanitarians, we went in on day two. We had our partners right present there on day two. We had teams there physically on day three. So um, I think we were there and the international aid has come in as soon as requested. So the problem is that uh, for one full day, the town was cut off and the search and rescue was very hard to, to complete. Now, now the international effort is there, but we need not to forget also the, the surrounding towns that are hosting refugees. There are still few villages that are cut off and villages that apparently are in high need. Yes, there is a, a long-term humanitarian impact of this as well, isn't there, as well as the uh, ongoing efforts in the, in the medium to short term. But do you feel that there is enough of an international aid presence there now? So for the time being, there are several agencies from the United Nations I'm talking about. We are on the ground. We are going to Derna. We have missions and to other locations. Uh, we've been facilitated also access with fast tracking of visa processes. So that effort and the surge is, is uh, coming in these days. 
Uh, of course, as you said, now we need more resources for life saving for humanitarian. We did an appeal as UN of over $70 million, and UNICEF has $6.5 million for the next three months of that. Uh, humanitarian aid uh, was going down in Libya because Libya was moving to recovery. So we need back those supplies and those resources for life saving. But then what is also very important is that financial institutions, international financial institutions, come in and support reconstruction. And there is where you can have a major role, especially for UNICEF when we talk about water, uh, education and health. Michele Servade from UNICEF. Thank